Moby Dick by Herman Melville, chapters 109 to 113. With his snow-white new ivory leg braced against the screwed leg of his table, and with a long pruning hook of a jackknife in his hand, the wondrous old man, with his back to the gangway door, was wrinkling his brow and tracing his old courses again. "'Who's there?' hearing the footstep at the door, but not turning round to it. "'On deck! Be gone!' "'Captain Ahab mistakes. It is I. The oil in the hold is leaking, sir. We must up Burton's and break out.' "'Up Burton's and break out! Now that we are nearing Japan! Heave to here for a week to tinker a parcel of old hoops! Either do that, sir, or waste in one day more oil than we may make good in a year. What we come twenty thousand miles to get is worth saving, sir.' "'So it is, so it is, if we get it.' "'I was speaking of the oil in the hold, sir.' and I was not speaking or thinking of that at all. Be gone! Let it leak! I'm all a leak myself. I leaks and leaks, not only full of leaky casks, but those leaky casks are in a leaky ship, and that's a far worse plight than the Pequod's man. Yet I don't stop to plug my leak, for who can find it in the deep-loaded hull? Or how hope to plug it, even if found, in this life's howling gale. Starbuck, I'll not have the Burtons hoisted. What will the owners say, sir? Let the owners stand on Nantucket beach and out-yell the typhoons. What cares Ahab? Owners, owners! Thou art always prating to me, Starbuck, about those miserly owners, as if the owners were my conscience. But look ye, the only real owner of anything is its commander, and hark ye, my conscience is in this ship's keel. On deck! Captain Ahab, said the reddening mate, moving further into the cabin, with a daring so strangely respectful and cautious, that it almost seemed not only every way seeking to avoid the slightest outward manifestation of itself, but within also seemed more than half distrustful of itself. A better man than I might well pass over in thee, what he would quickly enough resent in a younger man, I, and in a happier, Captain Ahab. Devils! Dost thou then so much as dare to critically think of me? On deck! Nay, sir, not yet. I do entreat, and I do dare, sir, to be forbearing. Shall we not understand each other better than hitherto, Captain Ahab? "'Thou art but too good a fellow, Starbuck,' he said lowly to the mate. Then, raising his voice to the crew, "'Furl the tagallant sails, and close-reef the topsails, fore and aft. Back the main-yard, up Burton's, and break out in the main hold.' It were perhaps vain to surmise exactly why it was that, as respecting Starbuck, Ahab thus acted. It may have been a flash of honesty in him or mere prudential policy which, under the circumstance, imperiously forbade the slightest symptom of open disaffection, however transient, in the important chief officer of his ship. However it was, his orders were executed, and the Burtons were hoisted. Chapter 110 Queequeg in His Coffin Upon searching, it was found that the cask...